Welcome everyone to our day four of our social skill challenge. I'm Laurence, your host. For those who don't know me, I am, I've been a coach for, corporate coach for 10 years and a parent coach for three. And I'm the founder of this wonderful group where people get to really come together and share in their journey, right, of being a good parent. And so today I'm so excited. Day four of the challenge is on resistance defiance and opposition so real talk right okay do you feel crushed when your child is just screaming that they hate you they embarrass you publicly do you feel like resentment or even hatred against yourself against them and so why are they not fitting in why are they doing this to me right um and do you also like challenge your parenting, right? Your, your life's entire meaning and work, you know, um, definitely have been there. I see you, I hear you. Um, and what I'd like to invite you to do is imagine, imagine your child never embarrassing you again, never publicly insulting you again. And like not not having that ongoing conversation, what am I doing wrong? How is he gonna fit in? Oh my God, what's, what's his life gonna be? Blah, 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 that ongoing conversation, that noise that prevents you from really focusing on yourself, delivering on your own self. And, you know, just crafting a life that m matters, right? And it could be your business, it could be your personal life, like you could reinvest that leak of energy that you, you just spend those hours a day worrying in utter, anxiety you could reinvest that time on yourself and doing that you would reinvest on your child right so can you imagine lifting that burden of just asking yourself what what's going to be next right you know how can i help my child okay so first thing i want to talk about is misdiagnosis today the worst case the worst thing you could do is actually go on google and google defiance and you'll land 99 percent like the first result is going to be ODD, oppositional defiance disorder. And so it's, it's, you know, it's been stigmatized and, you know, like, uh, everybody, everything now is ODD. So everything now is ODD. So your child doesn't want to do something. Oh, it's got ODD. Uh, you know, I'm struggling with my mic. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, uh, and um, so yeah, googling googling that is is definitely not helping because it's just it's not that those diagnoses don't exist. By all means, they do exist, right? It's that if it's the wrong diagnosis, you're fixing the wrong problem. You're fixing something that's not broken, and so the diagnosis the diagnosis itself is not a problem it's just that you go after the wrong one right so you definitely derailing you know literally derailing yourself um on this topic i want to mention the works of um, dr mana Villahoke. she's a developmental psychiatrist a psychologist sorry and for her oppositional defiance disorder is just a reaction to continuous stress and <clears throat> what uh, people start calling a developmental trauma. So a trauma or a continuous stress that happens in the early ages from zero to six and uh, go on to have significant impact in your child's life uh, from a health perspective. It could be like autoimmune, it could be chronic disease, it could be uh, you know, inflam chronic inflammation, chronic headaches, and so on and so forth. And uh, this has been studied right now. So developmental trauma uh, is the silent killer, right? It's something that you don't see, and you don't wear your scars on your, on your, you know, on your sleeves, but, but you do have those scars. Uh, the other thing that um, I, I definitely use in my life and my work is the concept of neuroception. So neuroception is the automatic and subconscious um, analysis of threat. It's done in the brain. Again, it's subconscious, and um, I, I always reference the works of Dr. Stephen Forges, and I'll put the info in the, in the comment um, in, the, in the description. But um, so his works is to look at uh, childhood disorders under that angle of faulty neuroception. So could it be that your child um, 
uh, analyzing threat when there is none, um, is prone to that stress reaction of attack, of you know being oppositional, defiant. Um, could it be that your child is experiencing a lot of anxiety and stress? And so that's what's causing the reaction, right? So uh, I think it's an amazing way to look at neurosciences um, to help with our parenting. Often we base our, our parenting on things that are just, you know, said to us or transmitted, you know, said to us yet taught, right? But it's not really based on science. And what I like about this approach is that, one, you understand that the a prefrontal cord cortex is not um, completely developed un until the child is like seven. And two, there could be some, um, the uh, neuroception could be faulty and thus resulting in feeling threat and attack when the child shouldn't. And so it's sort of a good news because now you can work on that on mitigating the effect of faulty neuroception, right? And how do you do that? Um, definitely one is to work on, you know, reigniting trust and connection between the child and the caregivers. Uh, if that lost was lost, if that trust was lost, work on getting it back or changing environment, right? Because if a child is under constant threat and stress, um, you can work all you want at home, but if you don't fix the environment, it's always going to come back. Uh, the other thing is really understand the child's vulnerabilities and specificities, right? So, um, you, you know, if you have a strong-willed A-type boy like I do, you know, that's funny for when I want to look at your family, right? Things are genetic, right? So I do have very strong-willed man in my, in my family, in my ancestry, right? Politicians, military, you know, the strong-willed. Uh, and so um, I, I can accept him a little more. I really focus on his specificities, right? Uh, and his, his him, him, right? Seeing him, seeing him, right? Um, the other thing about, um, that I wanted to, sh I don't know if I'm going to share the screen, but uh, that I wanted to talk about is, um, if, we, if you're, okay, if you think of neuroception, right? And faulty neuroception causing the resistance, the defiance, the opposition. Our current behavioral plans that, you know, they sell us at school or whatever, they don't work because it's based on the assumption that your child is this mean brat, this little animal that should be tamed, that deserves punishment, that deserves abuse. And that by doing that, that's that assumption that if you do that, if you crush your child, you'll get them to obey. And so it is not only the wrong assumption, because I don't know about you, I, my child is not a little animal that needs punishment to understand. I trust in his abilities to understand and, re and receive my, my coaching. And, um, and so that, that assumption is just wrong. So you, you've been sold a, a method that, that, def that definitely does not work. Not only that, but it creates a cycle of violence is what I want to talk about. Violence creates violence. I need to say this to you. Violence creates violence. And it's not only physical, it's emotional. You're crushing your child. You're being mean to, to him. You're taking away everything that, they, that, that brings any relief. You know, your child is hyperactive and, you know, your detention, right? And then he gets home and he's, and he's grounded in his room, not able to move. That is taking away what could help them, right? Just on grounds of what? Of that assumption that you need to crush your child to get them to obey, to get them to respect, if that's even respect, right? And so you creating a cycle of violence. They did something wrong, you're doing something back to them to crush them, and then that creates their reaction. And then you go on and on and on in that cycle. And nobody's the bigger person to stop that from happening, right? You're on and on and on. You do this, I do that. You do this, I do that. And then does it work? Does it work? Right? I'm asking. It, it, it doesn't. It doesn't. So it's the wrong assumption. It creates that violence cycle in your life. So you live in constant um, punishment and retaliation. And that's your day-to-day, -day, every day, fighting for homework fighting to get to school, 
fighting, fighting, fighting in what we call in our program an auto autoimmune disease. You're turning against yourself. You're crushing yourself. And so by doing that, you're surrendering your parenting. You're surrendering your connection to yourself because your connection to your child is your connection to yourself. And so we see when this happens um, that it has an effect, a ripple effect into your entire life. You become more aggressive at work. You become less fulfilled in your relationship. You become less patient with your family. You don't have the time to do anything because you're so busy retaliating against your child and trying to crush their will. Does it work? It doesn't. So it's a complete loss of time. And not only that, it's hurting your child and it's hurting yourself. And so if you're like me and you want results and you've tried that and it doesn't work, just my, my, only, my only advice is to have the strength and the courage. I'm not saying share this with everyone because actually we teach in our program uh, how to understand at what level people are in their journey and their parenting and if, you know, with school officials. Uh, at what level uh, they are, and you just you pick up on cues, you, you ask open ended questions, you ask follow up questions, you really try to see where they are in order to say the minimum. You know, uh, sometimes you have to play dumb and, and believe, you know, just let go of what they say and, and just, you know, go with the flow. Sometimes you can pick up on somebody because not everybody is, you know, one teacher is is there and interested and she wants to help and you can make an ally. We teach that in our program. And you, you really speak to um, somebody who can advocate for you, uh, you know, and, and in ways that you won't be that mom, right? So there's a skill to that and there's a way um, and it's it's not one size fits all. Sometimes you'll need to play dumb. Sometimes you need to disagree politely. Sometimes you flat out have to say, this is... <laughs> I'm taking my child away from this toxic environment. Sometimes you'll have to break with, you know, so-called friends or family that really just want you to project what was, what was projected onto them, right? And that's the other thing I want to talk about is that when you think about it's your upbringing, right? What kind of discipline, conventional or not, did you receive? Uh, were you forced to comply? Were you forced to give up your life and your self-worth in order to fit in the normative process? If so, sometimes you can find it very difficult to see that your child is, is, is trying to refuse that, is trying to protect their self-worth, is trying to stand up for themselves. Very, very difficult, I see that. And it really depends on your past. So, And because what we receive, we want to project. It's like this law. I don't know why we do this, but it's true. How we were treated, we want to project and we want to do the same to others. And that's just wrong because it's not because I lived under a dictatorship that my child should live in total oppression. You know, it's just not fair, you know. And the whole point of parenting this child is that so that they don't have to go through what we went through so that we could provide them a better living and learning and, and evolving environment, right? And so, uh, but it's unconscious. All this is unconscious. What, what happened to you, you're projecting into the child. That's completely unconscious until you do the work. You ask yourself those questions. You have the courage to take time and to look into yourself. True or true, this happens, right? And, and, and just accept and have the courage to go against whatever people tell you, um, you know, and, and really trust your parenting intuition right? Trust your intuition. I know professionals put it down. I know your family puts it down. Everybody look, talks down on you like, you don't know what you're doing, but it's time to take our parenting role back. Time to take it back. Nobody knows that child or loves that child as much as you do. And so it's nice to take advice, but um, you know, one, it has to be professional advice because if you just don't spend the time and you don't do a due diligence, a complete assessment, then how good is it, right? And it's a, it's a fair challenge, right? I, I keep telling you about my story, like this very prominent hospital in New Jersey, uh, the, the, the developmental pediatrician should just read the notes from the teacher and uh, ask my child to play with a, with a doll. And he said, no, and that was it. ADHD, ODD, and everything else. And I was like, okay, um, 
that was a little fast and I didn't really trust it. And I had two or three other uh, visits, uh, not, not with that person that, that completely said this was wrong. <laughs> and if it was true, again, I'm not against any diagnosis, but it has to be the correct one so that I'm not fixing what's broken, what's not broken, and I'm not going after something that has nothing to do with it, right? So looking in your past will show you why you keep repeating those patterns that were imposed to you. And, and do you really want to keep doing that, right? Isn't there time now for you to say, I, I felt in my body this pain and I refuse my child to go through the same and and when you decide then and you trust your intuition as a parent and you surround yourself with you know positive encouraging and caring truly caring people you can um craft that journey that is yours right and and change and change the game and so um Looking at your past, you'll see why you're too permissive or too coercive, or even worse, alternatively permissive and coercive, right? And then you know, because that's the worst with a with a child that's defiant. But um, the other thing I wanted to mention is um, following that blame, right? We blame the child. The child is this little mean, evil thing that you need to you need to you need to really crush to make them obedient, right? So that idea, it, isn't it baffling to see that we put the blame on the child and we completely, I mean, I mean, I mean an utter awe of, of that because how can you expect somebody who's growing, who doesn't have the empathy yet, who doesn't have the executive functioning yet, who doesn't have the social skills yet, that's why they're growing. That's why they're children because they're not ready yet to function in the world. And then we're saying, oh my God, if we don't crush them now, they won't be able to fit in the, fit in the world. They won't be able to work. How are we preparing them for work? And I'm asking you, if you go to work and uh, your boss is asking you something and you don't do it, is your boss slapping you in your face? If you come back home and you get sassy with your husband, or you have an attitude, do they slap you in your face? No. So why are we accepting that towards our most vulnerable citizens? It's just because they're vulnerable, right? So we could pass, we can lash on them. And that's where it's not appropriate. That's what, you know, because something, somebody did this to you, you want to do this to your child. And it's just stopping and thinking, do, is this really what I want for my life? Autoimmune disorder, attacking your own cells. That's what we're doing. When we're giving in that thought process that the child should be tamed, the child should be crushed in order for us to have what we want. Might is right, right? That's plan A. If, you, if you're familiar with CPS, the Collaborative Proactive Approach, um, from, from Dr. Ross Green, that's, that's plan A. Plan A is that gives you the fastest, fastest thing, least amount of work involved, because of course, if you're gonna talk about looking into your iceberg, open-ended question, coaching your child, all this takes time, right? It takes time, it takes investment, it takes, you know, accepting that, that lash out on us, because, you know, with grace and, 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 and that's, that's a lot of work. And so that, that's plan B, actually, really proactively and collaboratively speak with your child, find the real problem, okay? And that's my last point that I want to talk about is that if your child is insulting you, calling you names, telling you they hate you, humiliating you outside in the world, my question to you is, don't you have a bigger fish to fry? And just how you feel, oh my God, I feel so self-conscious, people are looking at me, I'm looking, I'm looking like a bad mom, and, you know, I feel like a total failure, like, my question, I, and I understand that, I, 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 I feel you because I've been there, I'm still there, right? You do feel like that, but don't you have a bigger fish to fry? If that child is acting like this, 
What are they going through their life right now? You know, and I'm not talking about ideally a child should be like this when he's five, like this when he's seven. I'm not taking you through a checklist. I'm asking real talk, real talk. What is this child going through right now that's causing him to melt down this way? What is killing his self-worth? What is crushing him internally? And it could be anything. It could be anything. You look in your environment, you look in your home, and that's the other thing. We need to be brave to look into our house, to look into our processes. What is making my child really stressed? And I know it's hard because we already give up so much of our lives to this child. And it's hard to take a look, be with yourself 10 minutes and take a look at what might be causing this. Um, let me flip this around for you. I actually like finding things that are on my end because I know I can fix that, right? You, un you, you know, unveiling something that's on your side is easy because you just go ahead, okay, have the courage to look at the, at the issue and fix it. The more difficult situation is when you have to deal with people in school, people in social world, your family, your friends, because you have to manage them. You have to manage them. You have to manage up or down, but you have to manage their feelings, their insecurities. Oh my God, my child's not so smart and your child is. I'm jealous. I'm going to make those comments. Or, you know, um, I'm a teacher and I hate how you ask so many questions that, you know, all day and then now I bear a grudge against you. And now anything I'm going to look for to suspend you, do something to you, you lower your self-esteem and, oh, I'm not going to say anything when kids bully you. So you go back home with a scratch in your face every day. This is difficult to manage. Those people are difficult to manage, to bring along or, you know, make an executive decision as the mother of your child to just remove that child from that environment. And that's an executive decision. But for that, you need to be cool, calm, and collected. <laughs> and analyze and try everything before you do it. But... Uh, that's, that, that's more difficult because you cannot force somebody, right, to do anything. You can try to influence them. But the environment I find is more challenging than yourself because you can change yourself if you have the courage and, you, and the willingness and the commitment to change it, right? So my example, uh, A-type driven mom, so a lot of stress and continuous stress I find, even like I'm not – overwhelmed every time every day but i am continuously under you know ma i manage it but i'm continuously delivering here delivering 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 and it's that you know that i'm, I'm projecting onto him right it's uh sometimes when i'm so busy i'm in the middle of something and i'm you know traveling speak at places i, I you know i'm not home so I don't know that, you know, gets his sleep, he gets his vitamin, he gets his veggies, he eats well, you know, that's the thing. Because those things right there, they could account for, you know, processing issues, you know, not addressing those, right? So that's not addressing processing issues is a problem because it's a continuous stress they're under, you know, the noise in their ears and the, you know, the the smells that really bother them, right? So that's something else. But it's a good news because let me flip that around, right? Because you can fix whatever's on your end, you can fix. So so it's 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 exciting to know that you actually have a lot more power in your child's finance, you know, a lot of impact that you think. Um, and that's it's just going about the right process that will give you results instead of just listening in, you know strategies that are for neurotypical be, to be honest even for neurotypical i don't know that it works i don't know because i don't have a neurotypical child but i know for mine it doesn't and so once you understand it doesn't because you've tried you've you've exhausted yourself fighting with your child and it doesn't work once you got there and you, and you just refuse to be your child's um jail keeper to be your child's abuser uh, you just refuse that, like philosophically and metaphysically and spiritually and emotionally, you refuse that. Then you open the doors to look at what really matters, what really is causing this. 
because that's that's my feeling. I've got a big fish to fry. You know, yes, they need to comply. Yes, I do anything to avoid getting those angry notes from this teacher again, ever again. <laughs> but what is what is happening underneath the waters, right? What's the other part of the iceberg that underneath the water? That and that's you know defiance and opposition, ODD is the fever. It's telling you something is wrong. Something is wrong. What is wrong? If it's on your end, you can go fix it. If it's not, you can influence the environment and, you know, get the help you need. You know, the counselors against anxiety, uh, the coach for yourself, to strengthen yourself in your, in your parenting and, and you, know, you know, be there to support you, challenge you, uh, you know, be there for you, listen to you, uh, coach you. Um, I'm going to put a link to my scheduler in this, in the comment, get a spot in my calendar. We can talk and we can decide if working together makes sense uh, and how fast we can ignite those results for you, right? Um, and so having the courage to just stop blaming the child and look at and you'll be surprised. You will be surprised at how much is in the environment and at how much is in ourselves, right? Uh, how much of all of those things impact your child and they're just receiving all those negative toxic things or experiencing all those toxic experiences and trying to rid their body out of it. And that's the physical method melts down that's the physical opposition talking back insult right um saying no talking back right this is physically trying to get rid of all of this and you know you've got bit bigger fish to fry than just oh he, you know that this angry note from the teacher something's going on and the more you fix it the more you get a healthy child not an angry child you know if you take away every single thing that they like in their life, like how much, you know, when, once they lost everything, how are they going to listen to you, right? So they've got this wound and not only you put a bandaid and you don't care about healing the wound, but you're tapping onto it until the child, you know, just stops complaining because they became numb to your violence uh, and disconnecting from you. And so, I'm only saying that because your child is in your house under your power for a limited time. They will walk out. They, they will walk out the sooner they can if they live in an abusive home, if they live in a place where nobody gives them their strength and their space to be who they are. And your connection with your child is the most important thing in the world. It's been proven scientifically that having the right emotional support helps you develop executive functioning, helps you problem solve, helps you connect with others and have empathy with others, which is what people need in this world, right? The adults of tomorrow, that's what they'll need. Look at the corporations. Are they, are they going might is right or are they needing collaborative work? Win-wins. Problem solving. Yes, they do. So this is the type of people that we will need. We already need. This is the future. Not somebody who just takes order, a little soldier who doesn't move all day, who doesn't use their critical thinking. That's not what the world needs. And guess what? In this age where, you know, robots are taking over our jobs, because I'm only saying that I don't care about jobs right now. I'm only saying that because that's what people hear all the time. How am I preparing this child for the world? Have a job. So it's not even true because robots are going to take most of our jobs in the future. And the ones, the one, the adults that will thrive are the adults that exert critical thinking, creativity, flex, flexible thinking, um, you know, and, you know, are able to drive those connections, right? I.e. Those adults are the ADHD of today, the ADD of today, the ASD of today, the ODD of today, because they'll have that creativity, that intelligence, that mind, powerful mind, 
and there be more human than the robots. And, you know, than those people that think that it's just about taking orders. The world need critical thinkers, guys. They need critical thinkers. And you have one in your house. And don't crush it, you know, because they, they'll, they'll, you'll, every time you turn against them, they, they see your connection being lost. They see your relationship hurt. And when is it going to be a good time for you to take action? When is it going to be a good time? You just have the courage to say, I'm taking my parenting game back. And I hear about everybody's uh, feedback and input, uh, but I definitely make the decisions. And how do I do that? I trust my intuition and I look at my child and not busy trying to apply a standardized method on him, but busy developing him at his level. Not saying it's okay to have those behaviors. I actually have very high expectations of my child, extremely high standards, and so does he. But how do we go about teaching that, right? Every time you exert violence or strength, or might on them, you take over that executive function that they should know how to handle, they should know how to apply, right? And that's, and that's the challenge, right? So this was day four of our ah, wonderful challenge, you know, social skill set challenge. Uh, my challenge to you today is to take 10 minutes and ask yourself what kind of parent you want to be. Ask yourself if everything they told you to do worked in the past. How did this work for you? Ask yourself what it's worth for you to have a solid, healthy relationship with your child. And ask yourself, do you have a bigger fish to fry? And if you work on the cause, imagine your life not having those tantrums anymore, not having those lashing onto you anymore. And if they happen, very fewer instances first, and then second, you'll have the grace and the power and the unshakable confidence to meet them with grace and to meet them with calm and to take those as incredible opportunities to work on your child's social game, to work on your child's skills, to work on your child's self-confidence. So that's my challenge to you. Retrospect and take a look and see this ODD in a different light that can involve change in the future and a better future for all of you in this family, okay? So that's my challenge to you. And I know it's super big, but if you take action, even a slight, slightest, tiniest action on that, uh, I'm so excited because I know this is good stuff and this will change um, a lot of things, you know, a lot of things. So I'm so excited. I want to thank you for, um, for, you know, sharing in this challenge, uh, taking the time to analyze a couple of things uh, on those hot topics, getting some context, right? Getting some insight, uh, working on you, taking the time for you. I applaud you for that. Okay, uh, put in a comment, let me know your thoughts. Um, and um, again, book some time with me. If this you know, speaks to you, book some time with me. We've got a lot of work to do. We've got places to go, okay? We've, we've got a lot of things to heal and work on and absolutely move forward, okay? So, love you. Uh, I'll speak to you very soon. And again, thank you for sharing with me this time and space. Okay, alrighty, I think we are good. This was an amazing challenge, guys. Amazing challenge.